Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Forest with Emilio. It's nice to be back here recording again for the channel. I have been away for about three or two weeks now and um, I did not intentionally run away. I was sick in May and uh, I think for about a week or two, I was really, really down. So but I'm now better thanks to a few of my uh, channel members that were aware of that they reached out to me thank you very much and uh, that was why i did not really get to post last month and um also this month the month has just started and um i'll just do a recap of uh, some of the trades i took in may hopefully i can i can remember some and um, then I will also do some breakdown on the trades I took already in the month of June. So let's get right into it. Starting with odd USD, I, as you guys know, my favorite PS to trade is the Euro USD, the GBP USD, Nasdaq, and um, sometimes GBP JPY. But uh, I think in when May was about ending, I did not really like the price action on EU and GU, so I decided to just check um, some other peers and see what we got on the chart. And um, I got to let me just start with Sport USD. I saw this beautiful supply zone on odd usd and as you can see this one was responsible for this push to the downside so we had a break of structure right there and market came and tapped back into this um, supply zone so i set an alert right here for when price would touch into this zone then <clears throat> i was waiting for a confirmation entry on the lower time frame which i thought i got right and um, looking at price, when price was pushing all the way up here, we can see that we have this trend line um, liquidity right here. And also we can see that we have um, a demand zone here that was left unmitigated. So I was like, wow, price tapped into this place perfectly. And now we have a break of structure right here. And since we have liquidity to be cleared, we have imbalance here. It was a beautiful um, setup to get into a sell trade, which I did. I got into the sell trade right here and I took a sell trade. I think if we go down more, we have a more refined entry or thereabouts on the lower time frame. But I got into the sell right there and I was expecting market to push all the way down here. But market did not do that. Uh, so at this point, I think I was at break even. Market came back because we broke structure. And whenever we break a structural low, we should um, break even. So at this point, I break even. And um, the market came back and okay, no, 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 I did not break even because when market was pushing back up, I thought I saw that we had this um this like a mini supply zone right here. And since market was coming into it, I was like, okay, it's likely price wants to come and retest this. So I did not um break even since price reversed. I did not break even and I was expecting price to push further down again. And yes, price did push further down by well, the end of the day. I got stopped out as you can see my stop loss was it. Okay, so I I think my mistake was I should have uh, had my break even set at this place, but even at then it's, it doesn't look like a doesn't look like a good idea to have a break even at this point because now as you can see market reacted off this supply zone and we can see market is selling again. So I think it wasn't a bad decision not to break even, but I got stopped out and. I was like, but that was um, bad. And um, moving on, later on, as you can see, market grabbed this liquidity right here. As you can see, liquidity was grabbed right here. Now that 
this looks interesting. Now that we've grabbed the liquidity and price has now tapped further into this higher time frame supply zone. So I was like, okay, this looks nice now. And um, since this low was responsible for this push into the upside, so I saw this as a break of structure and I wanted to take another sell entry from right here. I had my limit set right here, waiting for a sell and still looking to take price down here. And as you can see, price just skyrocketed and that was two trades that I lost in a row. And I was like, okay, I'm done with this pair. So moving on to NZUSD now. On NZUSD also same scenario. We had a break of structure and market pulled all the way back up. This was like the last supply zone that this was a supply zone that caused this whole push to the downside. And uh, I was looking for a, and um, on this trade, it was a missing uh, sell trade because uh, price tapped into it perfectly, into this supply zone. Then we add this break of structure. We add another break of structure. And I was expecting price to push into this supply zone right here. And I add my limit set for right here. Add my limit set. And for my take profit, I was aiming for this zone right here. As you all know, I love to be in and out of my trade in a day. I'm a day trader, I don't swing trade. And as you can see, we have um, trend line liquidity right here. So for people who swing trade, probably would have had their uh, take profit to be as low as this level right here. But for me, every new day, I believe every new day will present you with the opportunity to uh, to get into a get into a trade. So at this point in time, this has not happened. Let me cut. So at this at this point right here, since we had this break of structure, I was a bit surprised to come into D zone and take my sell trade. But unfortunately, as you can see, price just decided to miss my limit. And I was thinking, should I go in for a market execution when I saw market was pushing down? But I was like, no, price should definitely come and react to the supply zone. And this is what we should note sometimes that price will not always mitigate every zone at every point in time, okay? Sometimes price will mitigate like the 50% of an imbalance, for example, uh, or FVG as some will call it, this scenario when price dropped at this level, the price dropped at this level right here, we had this imbalance from right here to this week. And sometimes price will react off the 50% of imbalance and mitigate it and sell. And as you can see, if I'm taking that option to take a sell, that will leave me with like 19 pips. Um, though that is a little bit over, my stop loss that we normally use, I will likely not want to go beyond 15 to 16 pips. But sometimes if some condition warrants me to go over such pips, I will just have to reduce my lot size while still keeping my risk uh, management in place. So as you can see right here, market reacted perfectly off the 50% of this imbalance right there, this FBG right there. And my take profit was actually it. But unfortunately, I was not in this trade. And as you can see, if I had gotten into this trade, this would have been a perfect uh, one to three RR. This is about 2.99. This is about three RR. But my limit was missed, and I, to be honest, I was mad at the market when I saw this push to the downside. I was really, really mad, but it is what it is. We will not always catch every winning trade. So, and that was it on um, 
NZDUSD, it was a missing trade. And markets also came back again another day. And I was still hoping that probably this zone will still be mitigated. But as you can see again, price came and mitigated this zone only and dropped again. And I was like, well, why is NZD trying to do me like this? Why are you trying to allow me miss out of uh, nice trades? I wasn't comfortable to take a sale from right there. I was hoping this one, but it is what it is. So moving on to the next pair. GBPUSD. I had a beautiful, beautiful trade on GBPUSD on Friday, NFP. It was a beautiful um, sell trade right there. And um, I missed this all push to the upside in May. I missed out on this push to the upside because from right here, I was hoping price will react off this demand zone after we had a break of structure right here. So I was expecting price to push all the way down here. But as you can see, market just came close and started pushing up. So I missed this trade and on Euro USD as well, I missed this buy trade. And if price had gotten up to this place, I would have taken profits probably around this supply zone, which was over, <clears throat> which was over 100 pips. So all this push to the upside, it was, I missed out on this buy trade. So <clears throat> I think, yeah, on this trade right here as well, this sell right here, price reacted off this supply zone right here. And uh, as you can see, this supply zone is a good supply zone because it broke structure where the inception of this home move from right here to the downside. So it was safe for me to look for a sell trade at this particular point. And as you can see, price mitigated this supply zone nicely. We had that, um, we had that break of structure. Price came back, reacted of this, but I wasn't in the sell yet. So, but when price pushed all the way down here, I was uh, looking to take a sell entry from right here. But as you can see, price came pushed all the way up here. Price came close, but never got into this place. So I missed out on this sell trade again. And um, finally, when price later came back into this zone, I think I had a loss at this point in time. It was a losing trade. So that was another loss right there. And the market pushed all the way up. And at this zone also, I do not, I do not want to really go into the lower time frame now. I think at this level right here, I took, uh, I think I took a couple of losses as well. You know, sometimes it's so crazy when you have a particular bias on a trade and you end up still having losses and the market still end up pushing into your direction. It's so, so crazy. Let me just quickly go like to the 13 minutes time frame. So market pushed higher into this supply zone thereabouts from the left. Uh, let me just, we had this supply zone to the left. I don't want to go into that right now. And uh, we had a break of structure, we had a break of this low. And then I was expecting price to just mitigate uh, this zone right here. As you all know, sometimes to get a small stop loss on G, you can be quite uh, tasking. And um, I think I got into a sell trade and this was profitable, I guess. But when price pushed back here, I was looking to take another sell trade from right here and it ended up being a loss. And I was like, oh my God, I'm done with all this sell trade. And the next day I'm going to look for another trade. And um, I think the next day when I woke up, I saw that price had uh, this massive push to the downside. And um, Okay, fine. We had that um, push to the downside, and I was now looking at this zone for sell now. Since we now have a break of structure here, we have a break of this low. We also have a break of this low, and again, 
Price never pushed back into this zone. Price just came close and never pushed back. And um, on this particular cell, I was able to catch a sell trade on this cell. Yeah. At first, I at first I wanted to buy from this POI. There was a POI on the lower time frame right here on this day. And I wanted to buy because I was expecting price to still push into this POI for sale. So first on this very day, I had a buy, um, I had a buy bias, but price did not tap into my point of interest. I think on the five minutes or on the 15 minutes time frame, price didn't tap into it. So I missed out on this push. But later on, I was then I some what I will normally do sometimes, uh, if I see the way price is reacting. I saw that it looks like price did not want to push up into this direction, into this zone, and price wanted to sell. So I had to clear my shot and reanalyze. And when I reanalyzed, re I realized price was reacting off this zone, and I think we are possibly pushing for a sell. So I was then able to get into a sell trade. I think at this, um, I think at this level right here because now we add another break of structure right here. And when price pushed back up, I got into a sell right here. My stop loss was refined on the lower time frame, And I got into this sell, but for some reason, the price, price stayed for almost over an hour at this area. And I did not like the price action. Price then, um came back up again i was like i'm not feeling this sell trade anymore and i decided to just close my trade and take a um, profit and before i knew it there was a news release i think ism manufacturing something something on us dollar and this all pushed to the downside happened occurred and i was like why did i close my sell trade so sometimes it can really get crazy on the charts okay there are some weeks that will be crazy. You get into some trades and you are not so confident with those trades, even when all your rules and parameters are met, okay? So it is what it is. I missed out on this beautiful cell, even though I was in the cell at first. So I missed out on this trade, but it's what it is. So on Friday on NFP, price came all the way up here. I missed out on this buy as well because I refined, I over refined my entry on the lower time frame. I missed out on this beautiful buy. I was annoyed as well because it's these pips was over, it was over 80 pips. So I was like, okay, let me look forward to the a sell trade. But I wasn't so confident with the sell trade as well. Because now this was looking like some sort of trend line liquidity to me, and markets could probably still come back and tap into this zone. Okay. So, but in all honesty, I was like, I if I get a confirmation from here, I was gonna short this um this trade right here. I also did send uh this particular zone to my academy members that price taps comes into the zone we should look for a possible sell which we got let me move to the 15 minutes time frame so i can break this uh, beautiful sell down so as you can see price tap perfectly i think into the 30 minutes poi and then we add this break of structure okay we add this break of structure and this was the confirmation we needed to go short, okay? Like I always tell my academy members, you just don't want to get into a, a trade without looking for confirmations, okay? Because you don't know if the point of interest is going to hold. Price can decide to shoot up above it. So this is why we need confirmation. And as you can see, price tapped perfectly into the zone. And this was the last low that caused the last push. This low was responsible for this last push. Last push. And as you can see, price broke this low and we came back to mitigate this supply zone. So this was the confirmation entry. If you refine on the lower time frame. 
this was the confirmation entry to short this GBP USD. It was so, so straightforward. But I think we had another entry. I think I had an a entry on the five minutes time frame. Okay, this point of interest was the point of interest, but I think I got into my sell trade around this level, okay? I got into my trade around this level, but I had my stop loss at this eye. I had my stop loss at this eye right here. So though I was, I actually saw this point of interest, but because this zone looked like, oh, it was the one that caused this brick of structure, price could, mitigate this zone and start dropping, okay? So I did not want to miss out on this sell trade, okay? It wasn't anything about FOMO or whatever. Because sometimes I realized some of the missing trades I had was because I had a, a POI that was over refined and I got to miss out on a lot of trades in the past days or weeks. So that was why I got into the sell trade from right there and I had my stop loss above this eye. I was like, if price push up into this zone, it's all good, I'm still protected. And as you can see, market reacted off this zone nicely and um, take profit. And looking to the left side, you can see we have this sort of trend line liquidity right here that trend line liquidity and the uh, market left behind imbalance at all this level right there. So I was looking to take profits right here. And NFP came, I was in the trade already before NFP and NFP assisted in this um, sell trade to the downside. NFP assisted this trade. And uh, before the close of the market, this was the NFP move. This was the NFP sell. I was already in the trade in from the London session on Friday before the NFP during the New York session. And I sent this out to my uh, Telegram channel as well. And after some time, we had the opportunity to get into another sell trade because the market came back for another mitigation. As you can see, we had a break of structure right here. And this supply zone right here was not properly mitigated at first. So after the NFP news, market came back up and mitigated diesel. This was another great entry to take if you were on my Telegram channel, you could have taken another sell entry here. Even if you are not sure if this will hold, you can have your stop loss extended up to this high because then we still have room to short. Okay, we had imbalances at this level right here, we had imbalances at this level right here. So um, market did just that, tap back and take profit was actually it, okay? So this was just the beautiful, beautiful setup on GBP USD on Friday before the close of the market, okay? So moving now on to Euro USD. And uh, on Euro USD also, I had a sell bias, but I did not take the trade because price did not exactly tap into my supply zone. So we are on the one hour time frame, and as you can see, price took out all these lows on Euro USD. Price took out all these lows. And uh, I was looking at this uh, point of interest to be tapped, but it didn't get tapped. So, but I actually did see this confirmation. We had this low being taken out. We also had this low being taken out. And I was actually eyeing this supply zone. But because when I turned on my Asian session indicator, you can see that this eye, it was kind of risky to take a sell trade and have my stop loss at this eye because markets could possibly grab liquidity above the Asian range eye, okay? So I was waiting for this Asian range eye to be taken out before I start looking for a sell trade on Euro USD. But that made me miss out on this sell. So we had a break of structure by Rosie 
comfortable entry this cell. But later on, we later add another brick of structure right here. And this, um, if you go down to like the five minutes time frame now, on the five minutes time frame, we had this zone. So we could probably have gotten into a trade right here. Let me check my stop loss. Yeah. So this was another this was another great opportunity to get into a sell trade. And um, as you can see, we had another imbalance right here. So some people may have their entry right here, but I think if I wanted to take the sell trade, I would have taken it over since this stop loss right here was around 12 pips. And since I would normally take a 15 pips um, stop loss, I think I would have gotten into the trade here, but for some reason, I was not just sure of this Euro USD sell, even though I was in GBP USD sell, I just decided to leave this Euro USD sell alone and just focus on my GBP USD sell. But all the same, this was this is where the market um closed, and I'm still expecting more push to the downside on Euro USD to this level right here. And uh, let me quickly go to like the one hour time frame. Like I was saying earlier that just like GBP USD, I missed out on this buy trade on Euro USD. I had this point of interest marked when we had this break of structure right here, but market did not tap into the zone. So I missed out on this beautiful sale, which was uh, on this beautiful buy, which was almost or over 100 pips. So I missed out on that, but it's what it is once again. So on Monday, when markets open, I think I might probably get into a sell trade on Euro USD if markets can retrace back up and give me a good entry to short Euro USD down to this place. So keep your eyes on Euro USD. We might likely catch some nice trades right there. On Nasdaq, I did not really trade Nasdaq this last week because I didn't have um, enough confirmation. I yeah, I had this point of interest on Nasdaq, but I did not take the sell trade. I did not take the sell trade, and it was a good thing because I wasn't. I think I wasn't on the chart and. I think I did not have a lot set. And on Friday, on NFP day, I had this point of interest, this demand zone. I was thinking before NFP price would have gotten into this zone. And probably during NFP, we might have a push to the upside, but price was around this area when NFP news was released and we then had this push to the downside. So I did not take any trade on on NASDAQ. So on GBP JPY, I, oh my God, GBP JPY, I had pretty, pretty big losses on GBP JPY for some good reasons. GBP JPY decided to do me dirty. <laughs> I had a couple of losses, I think around this one. Yeah, at this one, I, I think I, I had, um, I don't know. I think market stopped me out and ended up selling. I think that was just it. I will not go into details on this trade, but it was a good sell. Like you can see, price tapped into this supply zone right here. And um, if you were on the chart, you will see that we have a break of structure right here. We had this low taken out and price came back to mitigate this zone right here. This was a pretty, pretty good sell setup okay so if you follow my normal strategy of uh, the tap into your higher time frame py wait for a break of structure wait for a retracement probably you would have caught this um, sell trade as well but i think i was stopped out because i got into the trade earlier also i can't really recollect but i had a loss on gbp jpy and I think that was it on on the treats I took. Okay, so so the my best trade so far, I think um, since like um, two weeks, the last two weeks in May to this June, this GBP USD sell trade was the highlight of 
my traits and um, it was really, really a pretty sell. So that was all guys on this video. And um, if you are yet to join my Telegram channel, you can get a link to the channel in the description below. I do not give out signals. <laughs> I do not give out signals, but sometimes I do. I just send um, trades that I have taken, losses or wins. I send it to the Telegram channel for them, to, for the channel members to learn from it. And uh, for my academy members, I do not send signals as well, but sometimes I do send uh, outlook to them. Then we always do a weekly forecast and projections on PS. We do breakdown together every Sunday. Look at the market. I get to answer their questions and we get to look at different PS together for the week. Okay. So that'll be all, guys. And um, Till next time when I will be dropping another content. Bye, guys.